As Dana said, I'm John Turner, President and CEO, and I want to welcome all of you and say good morning. Welcome to our 2019 Investor Day. I'm joined today by members of our management team and our board of directors. And on behalf of everybody at Regents, I want to thank you for your interest in our company and thank you for being with us here today. We last held Investor Day in November of 2015, right here in this very room. And at that time, we told you that Regions had generally recovered from the impacts of the Great Recession, that we were investing talent and building a sound risk infrastructure, and that we were beginning to focus on growth. We set out some three-year goals and objectives, anticipating that rates would rise and that the economy would improve. And while the timing of all those things didn't work out exactly as we had expected, we made adjustments, and I'm really proud to tell you that we achieved all of the goals that we set out, delivering an adjusted return on, on average tangible common equity of 16.5%, an adjusted efficiency ratio of 59.3%, and an adjusted uh, earnings per share growth of, of 24%. We're proud of these achievements, and as a result of them, confident in our ability to deliver on the goals and objectives that we plan to set out for you today. The last three years have been marked by really solid execution as we have grown and diversified revenue, managed expenses well, and effectively deployed our capital. We've grown our customer base, increased net interest income and non-interest revenue. We've improved our presence in markets, and we have significantly improved, we think, the quality of our businesses. We've also simplified the organization We've closed a number of branches, we've reduced square footage, and importantly, we delivered positive operating leverage for three years in a row. We've been particularly focused on, on risk-adjusted returns, and, and frankly, focused on both elements of, of that equation, risk and returns. We've been de-risking certain portfolios and asset classes like multifamily investor real estate, energy, and medical office buildings. At the same time, we've exited businesses that we deemed not profitable. Insurance, as an example, we recently announced our intention to exit the indirect auto business. We recycle capital within our corporate banking business, again, exiting over a billion dollars in credit relationships, probably closer to two, reallocating that capital back into better opportunities like mortgage banking and capital markets to drive revenue and, and uh, increases. We've also been focused on improving returns through better pricing and building broader and deeper relationships. As a result of our efforts, we delivered over the last three years a 72% total shareholder return, ranking us amongst the highest in our peer group. We think our focus on the fundamentals, on improving execution and on operational excellence has laid the foundation for us to continue delivering outstanding results. And as we look forward, we think we have still lots of room for improvement to, and the ability, we believe, to deliver outstanding results for our shareholders. And again, we'll share that with you today. So as we, um, you know, as we think about our, our business um, and what makes regions different, first, it is our loyal low-cost, solid deposit base. Uh, we're in some really good markets, and we have outstanding deposit gathering capabilities that we think we can leverage across those markets. We're committed to focusing on returns and profitability and have built a disciplined culture, and I think we've demonstrated that based upon some of the business decisions uh, that we've made over time. We've enhanced our risk management infrastructure and are committed to reducing the volatility in our business. We're not any longer going to be an outlier, and Barb God will talk about that a bit today. And then we think our Simplify and Grow Continuous Improvement Initiative provides a tremendous uh, opportunity for us to continue to improve our business, make banking easier for our customers, and drive our efficiency ratios down over time. So as we, as we began to think about our 2019 through 2021 plans, doing that in what is a, a pretty interesting time in our business, and it probably got a little more interesting for us over the last 30 to 45 days. First of all, we think the economy is still sound. 
As I travel across our footprint and talk to customers, they're still very optimistic about their businesses. Many had the best years they ever had in 2018, and their pipelines are still good. We have benefited at Regions from rising rates and from an industry-leading deposit beta. Now, clearly, rates are moderating, and so that's a challenge that we have to think about. Credit quality has been excellent and has contributed to earnings growth across the industry. As we begin to reach the end of a very long economic cycle, we have to think about credit normalizing and how we react to that. Technology is impacting our business at an ever-increasing rate. Our largest competitors are investing a tremendous amount of money in technology, and we're often asked, and I'm confident we'll be asked again today, the question about scale. Uh, we believe we have an adequate amount of scale to continue to compete and meet our customers' needs and capabilities, and we'll talk, talk about that today. Likewise, non-bank funds and financial technology companies are challenging the very essence of our business model. We have to think about how we respond to that. And the regulatory environment is improving uh, for sure, but I would tell you that expectations of banks are still very, very high, and we'll anticipate that going forward. So as we think about our plans, um, our business model is not complex, and we would say our plans are pretty simple and straightforward. We want to lean into our strengths, we want to continuously improve through investments and in innovation and technology, adding talent and capabilities along the way. We think that positions regions really well for success. Fundamentally, we think our business is a relationship business. It's still about bankers equipped with really solid technology who are building trusting relationships with customers by the quality of the advice and guidance they provide, and they do that across the many communities that we serve. Now, we're in some businesses that operate on a national level, and we'll continue to, to be in those businesses. They typically are around, built around our specialized capabilities. But fundamentally, again, we think our business is a relationship business. It's about building relationships with customers within our 15-state footprint, relationships that are profitable, relationships that are sound, and that will produce consistent and long-term results. So our commitment to customer service, the quality and the way that we work together, the strength of our culture of shared value and Regions 360, and the markets that we operate in, we think really differentiate Regions from our competition. And when combined with the sound risk infrastructure that we have been building since the Great Recession, we think we're well positioned to have a lot of success being a community-centered regional bank. Now, customer service is the hallmark of our business. We are we're really good at it. Uh, we're consistently rewarded, uh, we're consistently recognized by third parties for our intense focus on customers. We receive numerous awards, and Scott Peters will talk about that a bit. But we're also rewarded by our customers with very long-term, loyal relationships, tremendous brand favorability, <clears throat> and consistent growth. Now, our customers are increasingly wanting more speed. They want more reliability. They want more convenience. So how do we respond to that? We know they're banking with us across multiple channels at an increasing rate. In fact, over 60% of our customers today actually use multiple channels. We'll do, we'll have over 400 million logins to our mobile banking platform, over 300 million logins to our online banking platform. We'll do 100 million transactions in our branches, about 75 million transactions through ATMs, and have over 80 million calls into our call center. So clearly, customers are using the bank across all five channels, and we want them to have the same great experience wherever, however they choose to do business with us. In order to do that, we've got to have great technology. And we think that the investments we're making, the quality of the team that we're assembling, and our ability to operate in an agile fashion, if I can use that word, across, nimbly across a, a very flat organizational structure, 
will allow us to continue to deliver products and capabilities to meet customer needs and compete with our larger bank competitors. We have a strong culture. It's founded on our mission to serve customers and to make life better. We believe in the concept of shared value. That's business is only done well when all parties benefit. Our customers, our shareholders, our associates, and our communities. Our culture is founded on honesty and integrity and the belief that trust is earned and shared by all. We're a relationship bank. Our go-to-market strategy is built around local bankers working with industry and product specialists like our healthcare team, like capital markets, like wealth bankers, like treasury management specialists to deliver the entire bank as a team. The way that we work together as a team, we think really differentiates regions. And so we're continually recruiting a diverse group of bankers who we believe can give great advice to our customers and again, build trusting relationships across the communities that we serve. We operate in 15 states in the Southeast and Midwest. 86% of our deposits are in seven Southeastern states, Alabama, <coughs> Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Arkansas. We operate in 176 distinct MSAs and 90 counties that don't actually have an MSA. We're the largest bank in the Gulf South, uh, headquartered in the Gulf South, I should say. We, um, we have about 70% of our deposits are in markets where we have top five market share or better. And just coincidentally, 70% of our deposits are in markets where we don't believe we have any significant money center bank competition. So the core of our business in these seven southeastern states, very stable, provides for what we believe can be a consistent annuity-like uh, earnings capacity. At the same time, we're in some really good markets, some faster growing markets, uh, what we call growth markets, juxtaposed against our, our core markets. And in these markets, we look at the, our top 30 markets by deposit size. Roughly 60% uh, of those are growing faster than the average national growth rate. And we, about 15 of the 30, we have, again, top five market share better. We're investing in markets like Atlanta, Orlando, and Houston, where we think there's a real opportunity uh, to grow. And the demographics of our, our markets are, are exceptional. Uh, roughly 42% of all the jobs created in the U.S. since, 19, since, in, since 2009 uh, were in our footprint. 51% of the population growth over the last 10 years has been in the Southeast <clears throat> and in the Midwest. 35% of the nation's GDP is, is in our footprint. And roughly um, six out of 10 Locations that are most desirable for retirees are, are actually also in our footprint. So we think the combination of core markets providing great stability and our very loyal low cost deposit base coupled with the growth markets that we're in provide a real opportunity for us to consistently build our, and sustain our business over time. Our deposits are, are the, the real value of our franchise. Roughly just over two thirds of our deposits are retail deposits in nature. They're very granular, very loyal. About 60% of those retail deposits are in accounts that have been at regions for more than 10 years. So super loyal customers. We believe primacy is really important. And as a result, we, it's our view that about 93% of our consumer checking customers actually have their primary checking account with, with Regents. We've been growing the business. So if you look at just 2018, consumer checking accounts are up about 1.4%, consumer demand deposits up 4.2%, and consumer savings up 5%. So if you focus on those non-interest sensitive core deposits, we've been growing them consistently. In fact, we've grown consumer checking accounts now for six years in a row despite the fact that we've closed over 250 branches since 2014. So we think that is a proxy for, demonstrates 
our ability to continue to grow our business, grow the core of our business, which is our consumer checking business and, and really important to us. Importantly, <clears throat> about half of the accounts that we open over this period of time are for individuals who are 30 years of age or younger. So we're also, while we have this great loyal customer base, we're appealing to the younger crowd and seeing that through consistent mobile adoption and use of other channels. I talked about risk management and we're <clears throat> committed to developing a strong risk culture. Since the Great Recession, we've invested in talent and in building out our infrastructure. We've improved our governance, our policies, our procedures, all grounded in a comprehensive risk appetite that guides our activities every day. We're a relationship bank, I said that earlier, focused on returns. We're not interested in growth for growth's sake. And as you'll see later today, we don't have to grow a lot to achieve what we think are very reasonable uh, returns. And, and so as a consequence, we're going to stay committed to the fundamentals of our business, client selectivity, sound underwriting, proactive credit servicing at the core of what we do to deliver consistent and sustainable results over time. I talked about some growth markets, and with growth comes volatility. We've certainly seen that. It's important to us that we limit the volatility, that we, that we deliver consistent and sustainable results. And so you know, we have built out, again, a risk culture that we think will help us do that. We believe in balance and diversity, a lesson, a hard lesson that we learned as part of the Great Recession. And so we manage our exposure with a comprehensive framework of, of uh, concentration risk management, managing exposure in geographies, in portfolios, in industry sectors. And we have a whole scheme of early warning indicators that, that dictate our portfolio management activities, and Barb Godden will talk a bit about that later today. In late 2017, we announced our Simplify and Grow initiative, and it was in recognition of the fact that while we were benefiting from rising rates and good credit quality, you know, those things would come to an end. And when they did, what were we going to do? We knew we had to be operating more efficiently and more effectively. And so Simplify and Grow, not a program, it's a, an initiative. It's about how do we create a culture of continuous improvement? How do we get better every day? And so, so we focused on how do we make banking easier? How do we accelerate revenue growth? and how do we drive efficiency and effectiveness through improved processes. We've made a lot of good progress. We've streamlined the organization. We've reduced spans and layers. Uh, we have effectively over, over the time created greater lines of accountability and responsibility, which has been very helpful in decision making. We've grown revenue over the last year. We've decreased costs while investing in talent and technology and again, we think we're just beginning to see the benefits of, of our work. We have over 30, I think close to 35 initiatives still underway. And as John Owen will talk about later today, there's, uh, we think, a lot of benefits still to come from our efforts. Key to our, our Simplify and Grow initiative is to have an effective technology strategy. And again, we're focused on four, four key areas. <clears throat> First, we want to always focus on how do we make it make banking easier for our customers. So whether our associates are working on our digital banking platform, mobile banking, or online banking, whether our teams are developing a um, fully digitized consumer lending process, we're always talking about how do we make it easier, how do we make our customer experience better for our customers. We also want to use technology and data and analytics in particular to help inform our interactions with our customers. We want to personalize those interactions and get the best, the most of the opportunity we have, whether a customer is in a branch, in the call center, or a commercial or wealth banker is making a face-to-face -face call on, our, on that customer. How do we use data and analytics to gain insights that help us deliver the best experience for that customer when we're in front of them? We want to use artificial intelligence in places like BSAAML and in the call center to help reduce costs, 
to improve our processes and, and ultimately improve the overall quality of our work. And finally, we'll make investments in our core infrastructure using outsourcing APIs in the cloud to drive down the cost of technology while continuing to improve it. And think about it as a continuous cycle of reinvestment. As technology costs come down, we can reinvest in more technology, which we think, again, helps us as we think about how do we compete against some of our larger competitors. We're going to continue to make investments in our business, in talent, in markets, and in, in technology. We're hiring bankers in corporate banking, in commercial banking, in wealth banking, specifically in markets like Atlanta, Orlando, and Houston, where we're also building out a thin branch network to take advantage of the opportunities we think we see there. We're investing in St. Louis and other markets where we think we can either change the complexion of our footprint and significantly improve it or fill a gap that we have somewhere. And Scott Peters will talk about our retail network strategy, which we think has been very effective and has a tremendous amount of potential for us as we think about how we grow. And then again, we're going to invest in technology in the, in the various areas that I, I talked about a minute ago. We're focused on improving the health of our communities. <clears throat> we think that um, you know, our commitment and the work we do here aligns with our values, helps us create shared value, which is, again, focused on customers, communities, associates, and shareholders. At the end of the day, we, we have created a formalized a, a charitable foundation to help us be more intentional about our giving. We believe if we focus on economic and community development, on education and workforce readiness, and financial wellness, that we can impact communities, which ultimately is good for our business. Our business can't be any better than the quality of the communities that we operate in, and so this is an important focus for us. Our capital priorities haven't changed. We want to continue to use capital first and foremost to support organic growth. We want to pay a sustainable dividend of somewhere between 35 and 45 percent of earnings. We want to continue to make investments, and we think about that on two dimensions. Investments should be uh, investments that help us, well, first of all, think about it on two dimensions, non-bank investments and bank investments. And we've been making, over time, some non-bank investments, buying mortgage servicing rights, acquiring M&A capabilities, focused on growing and diversifying revenue, filling product gaps, and meeting customer needs. <clears throat> and we'll continue to do that. They're not big opportunities, but they are helpful. With respect to bank M&A, we've been real consistent in saying that we think uh, market conditions are not right for us to be active, first and foremost. And as importantly, if not more importantly, as you'll see as we go through the day, we believe the opportunities that we have to execute our plan will result in our delivering outstanding returns for our shareholders. Anything that would distract us from executing that plan, we think would be a mistake. M&A is very disruptive, and as a consequence, uh, if we were involved in M&A, bank M&A activity today, we think that would, again, would take us off what we believe is a, is a very good plan, and we hope you'll agree after you've had a chance to see it today. And then finally, we have capital that we're not deploying. We'll return it to our shareholders consistent with uh, the approach we've taken over the last few years. So in summary, uh, we think we've got a really solid, loyal, low-cost deposit base that is the real value of our franchise. We have great deposit gathering capabilities and we can and will leverage those as we need to to continue to support growth and liquidity needs in our business. We've been focused on profitability and risk-adjusted returns. We have, as a result of that, made intentional decisions about that have, we think, improved our business and will continue to do so. We've enhanced our risk management and governance. Uh, we're not perfect, but we're lots better, and we're going to continue to improve. Uh, we're not going to be an outlier, and Barb will talk about that again later today. And then finally, we think the work, the opportunities that we have as a result of our work around Simplify and Grow to improve our processes, to make banking easier for our customers, to accelerate revenue growth, 
have tremendous potential and we look forward to sharing that with you. So I'd like to now turn the podium over to John Owen and when John is finished, I'll come back up and both of us will uh, be happy to answer questions. Just a quick, quick introduction, John is our Chief Operating Officer. He is responsibil has responsibility for operations and technology for data and analytics, for uh, real estate and procurement, for digital banking, and as a consequence is intimately involved with our digital banking strategy. John joined the bank in 2007 as head of operations and technology. Prior to that time, he worked both in the airlines industry and in the insurance industry has a deep background in technology and in, in the operations area. John has been a, a great leader of our company and most recently, I'd say over the last five to seven years, John has led much of the innovation that we now experience and enjoy at Regions. So I'd like to turn it over to John. 